I moved into an apartment a few months back, and this Dyson Cyclone V10 stick vacuum has been a great asset. In this video, I'll be covering everything from the features to usage and to any potential downsides. So let's get right into it and talk about the overview. So the bulk of the machine is at the top with the attachments that you can hook up at the bottom. It's battery powered and thus completely cordless. With the usual attachments, it's roughly five pounds, so it's pretty lightweight to maneuver with just one hand. The canister is also attached to the main part of this machine and you can easily see when it is full. To operate, it's super simple. Just press and hold this red trigger button and letting it go will stop the vacuum automatically. There is a little guard here that you can use to still hold the vacuum without turning it on. There are a total of three suction levels, which you can flip using this little switch here. And here's how they sound at each level. When the vacuum is on or charging, you can see the blue LEDs here on the side to see how much juice is left. Total of three LED bars when it's full. Here's the port to plug it into its proprietary charging dock. And the V10 is compatible with pretty much all of Dyson's attachments for the V-series stick vacuums. So if you're looking for another specific attachment that doesn't come in the box, you definitely have options. Running through the attachments that I always use, First of which is of course this long piece, which I usually keep attached since it's great for maintaining that typical vacuum structure or for reaching to hard to reach places in the ceiling. And there's also the roller attachment, which has these tiny wheels to easily slide across surfaces without being entangled by hair. But if you notice, it also has a brush feature in it to help untangle any picked up hair. So this is of course mainly used for the floors and it works great on both hard floors as well as carpet. This combination brush tool, which is retractable, extendable, uh, so that you can use it either with the brush opening or with the hard mouth opening. I like to use this in say my car, it's very versatile. There's also this brush attachment, which is nice for raised surfaces like cleaning your mantle or on top of flat furniture. There's also this crevice attachment, which is super useful for getting into those hard to reach places like in between seat cushions. Because this was given to me used, I am missing one of the tools, which is the hair screw tool, which be useful for say vacuuming upholstery with especially with the brush function. All of the attachments attach the same way. You just have to align them in the proper way. And then the red button is how you would release the attachments. Most commonly though, you'll probably be in the standard upright vacuum mode. So the long attachment with the roller head at the bottom and on the lowest setting, I like to use this on the hard floors, so tile or laminate or hardwood flooring. Then I would up the suction level to the max if I'm going to vacuum over carpet. And just vacuuming the carpet in my bedroom here. Before I started vacuuming, the canister was completely empty. But after vacuuming my bedroom here, you can see just how much it managed to pick up. Thanks to the ball joint that it has towards the bottom, it makes maneuverability super easy and swift. You can turn it onto the side to vacuum sideways to get to those hard to reach areas. The max mode does tend to churn through the battery pretty quickly, but the lowest setting I was able to use at least five times to vacuum about 400 square feet of hardwood floors before I had to go and charge it again. And on the listing, it advertises to be able to vacuum for up to an hour. I think I've been able to surpass that. Um, but also another great thing about the battery life is that it has a really good standby time. So I don't vacuum you know, too often, maybe even once a month sometimes. So the battery still is able to maintain its capacity when it's not being used, which is really great. But when you do need to charge it, unfortunately it's not able to be used when charging, but it's kind of understandable. It's meant to be completely cordless for a reason. So you just have to slide it into its dock right here. And this dock can also be mounted on the wall. So you can use that as a permanent storage location when you're not using the vacuum. The non-detachable cable is roughly six feet long, so that allows you some flexibility in how far away from an outlet you can mount it. It takes roughly 3.5 hours, at least on the listing, to charge it from a completely dead battery to full. But from my personal experience, it takes a lot less, especially if you charge it when it's not completely dead. And if you wanted to just have it out of the way, you can easily fit this in a closet because of this nice compact size and maybe even between like a crevice in the wall or something. 
And since the attachments are detachable, you can even cram it into an even smaller space. In terms of maintenance, there really is very little. I mean, there is this washable filter that you will want to clean every once in a while. It does get clogged up pretty easily, so if you want the maximum suction power, you'll want to check on it by removing the lid by unscrewing it here at the top and then taking a look at how the pores are looking. Like I said, this is a washable filter, so you just need to rinse it out in some water, let it air dry, and wait for it to be completely dry before you reinsert it and use again. And from my experience, it does take more than just overnight if you don't put it in a sunlit area or a high airflow movement area. So keep that in mind because it will not work properly with a wet filter. And of course you'll want to empty your canister once it's full. So to do so, you have to detach any attachments that you have on the bottom. And then over a open trash can, you want to press down on this red part and then it should open up the latch and you may need to manually take a paper towel or something to pull out um, all of the gunk out of there, especially if you have long hair. And once you're done, just close it back up. Because it is a pretty small compact size, the canister also fills up very quickly. So I do find myself to have to empty it at least once during a vacuum session. So that is something to keep in mind if you're coming from a larger vacuum. And also because the majority of the weight is right there in your hand, if you are vacuuming for a long time, especially if it is inverted, like you're vacuuming the ceiling or you're doing a freehand like in your car or something, it can get a little bit tiresome after a period of time. But those are the only downsides I can really think of. I think we've come a long way from stick vacuums that tie in minutes. Now I see very little compromise versus the corded vacuum equivalents. The size, the power, and versatility of this vacuum is perfect for any apartment, dorm, or other small dwellings, and I really think it's worth the investment. So if you guys are interested, as usual, I have the link in the description.